Hello and welcome to the episode 242 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we will focus on the end of the filming for a BBC documentary, lots and lots of live gigs and a trip to see a friend performing. Let's start the show with the 30th of August 1960 evening performance that the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sukli from bass, gave at the Indra Club for their ongoing first residence in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass instead of Stu Sutcliffe, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, supported by the Strangers. Moving on, in 1962, we find the lads, now with their final official lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, still busy at the Cavern for one of their now routine two hour lunchtime concerts. At night, though, the band had a second engagement at the River Park Ballroom in Chester. It was the third non stop twist and jive evening that the venue offered in August, with the Beatles topping a bill that also included Jerry and the Pacemakers, three hours and a half from 7 30 to 11 pm. 1963. On this date, the Beatles completed their part in the filming of the Mercy Beat BBC documentary with some random street action. Ringo was filmed in Liverpool outside his house, in 10 Admiral Grove, battling with very young fans, seven-year-olds, probably paid by the production, and jumping in George's sport car, with the two driving away chased by fans. John and Paul also shot similar scenes, but these were not used in the documentary. Later, Ringo was filmed walking in a women's hairdresser salon in Lord Street. Having thus completed their filming duties for the documentary, the Beatles returned to the Audience Cinema in Southport to perform their fifth of six consecutive evening engagements there. On the 30th of August 1964, the Fab's first North American tour stopped at the Convention Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for another one-show performance, this time in front of 18,000 people. The newspapers didn't fail to notice that the band received a more warming reception than President Lyndon Johnson during the Democratic National Convention that was held on the same premises one week before. One year later, in 1965, the Beatles were again on the stage of the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California, for the second night in a row. The two combined performances earned the band $90,000, about $743,000 in 2020 money. This second night was again taped by Capitol Records for future release. Part of this recording plus the archived recording of the 23rd of August 1964, see episode 235 and 239 for more info on that, came out in 1977 as The Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl. For the album, George Martin and Jeff Emerick worked on six songs from 1964 and seven from tonight's show, editing the original tapes or their sweetened versions. Sweetening referred to the practice of overdubbing some of the live parts back in a studio environment. In this case, the procedure was needed due to the ambient noise and the Beatles' not to stellar performances. After the gig, to celebrate the impending end of their second North American tour, the four threw a party for the press members who had accompanied them throughout the stay. Talking about reporters, on this date, between 10 and 10.45 am, BBC aired The Beatles Abroad, a 45-minute documentary that served as a bank holiday special for the band. The program drew heavily on Brian Matthews' backstage interviews to The Beatles and the documentary material Matthew had produced during the first part of the Fab's American tour. In 1966, the Beatles left Los Angeles on a flight headed to London, England, 
after the end of what turned out to be their last tour. They arrived on the following day. On the 30th of August 1968, Paul McCartney worked alone on the completion of Dear Prudence at the Trident Studios in London, recording more piano and a flugelhorn part. Between 5 and 11 pm, the song was also mixed in mono and stereo, but both mixes were discarded further down the line. And since we're about to close the show, allow me to remind you once again that your support is instrumental to ease my way through the completion of this podcast and to produce more music-related content for your enjoyment. I'm happy that our community is growing, slowly but surely, and if you head to www.simonmas.com support, you'll find all the things you can do to make the difference and make sure that even more fellow music lovers can find us and join the fun. Thank you! Let's then close the dances for today with John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Ringo Starr and Maureen Starkey traveling to the Isle of Wight. The eponymous festival was already in full swing and George and Patty Harrison had already arrived on the island, but the main attraction for all the Beatles was Bob Dylan's performance that was to close the festival on the 31st of August, his return on the stage after some three years. Paul McCartney chose to remain in London with his wife Linda due to the birth of their first daughter, Mary. Having said this, all I have to add is my farewell. See you tomorrow for more than just a Dylan performance. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.